Hello YouTube, Barry and subscriber, he's the 60 Dark King, and today we're going to start our new Let's Play of Star Drive 2. Sorry if I sound a little different than usual, but... Yeah, today I had to go to the dentist get rid of one of my teeth. Why can I say this? This thing was broken in half, literally. And we spent over an hour in there trying to get it out, ha one half at a time. Anyway. If I sound a little different, so that's why. Anyway. Like I was trying to say... <laughs> Today we're gonna start Star Drive 2. And... What is Star Drive 2? Well, basically it's the latest in the long series of 4 axes. You know, export, exterminate, extort... And expand, I suppose. And basically, everybody knows this by the space bears. <laughs> so, anyway, there's that. I'm going to go with the human. Why? Because why the heck not? And we can customize it. Everything is so customizable. Celebrating. How many? I have. Tree. Oh, gravity, wormhole, poor one, home world, not wormhole. <laughs> religion. Yeah, I hate religion. The military, of course. Fifth base credit. Yeah, corrupt. That does sound like us. And if I have to be port something, might as well be that. What if what is on bright on normal high gravity worlds? Hmm. For a whole other question. Well, actually, this is what I would do. Well, man's corrupt, but not much I can do about it. So yeah, it sounds good, and it is. Let's go. Okay. Six the Dark King. Not sure. Okay, spiral like a galaxy. Not also threads. This dif difficulty, I suppose. Hi. Dangerous. I'll put it on high. Oh no, that's a difficulty. Okay, that's on high, and well, I'm just starting, so yeah, normal sounds good. Galactic fertility. Oh, system count. Let's put it on huge. 100 systems. Sounds good. It's no Warhammer 40k, but I'll take it. And for the name. Inquiry. And that's the name of the Empire. Opponents. Everybody. Okay, and who would Woven makes it. Eh, this cat wants to annihilate our life. Yeah, these are calculated. These are honorable. These are. Yeah, that's sure. That would make it perfect. And. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so we're going to the tutorials. First, there's gonna be episode zeros. After that, we're gonna start a let's play per se. So without further ado, let's begin this. We don't actually understand the fundamental mechanics of this device. It doesn't seem to scale quite unexpected. We know of no point on this time. Oh, and we know where exactly. So, space and. Hmm. Whatever. So, space was mass. In this universe, we. That mass can turn. To FTL, so Einstein remains correct, but we don't have partial elements. We know the rules of our real space, but had no idea that such space even existed. The near mankind discovered we're running FTL test system. Okay. Well, basically, that amount to what would happen if we accidentally discovered a star drive. Welcome to Star Drive 2. The goal of Star Drive 2 is to build a space empire. As Emperor, it is your duty to explore the unknown reaches of the galaxy and to select which planets you wish to colonize or conquer. This tutorial will help you understand the tools at your disposal. Please note that some parts of the interface will be temporarily disabled to keep this tutorial on track. Okay, voice tutorial! How about that? Remember, this is one a one-man team project. Even for actors, we do huge teams don't have this kind of stuff. <laughs> well, quality over quantity, you are I guess. Currently viewing the star system containing your home planet. You can also see your starting fleet, which contains a colony ship and an exploration frigate. Let's take a look at your home planet. Left-click it to zoom to the colony overview screen. Okay. The colony overview screen allows you to manage your planetary economy. As we explore the various interfaces found in Star Drive 2, keep in mind that this game is rich with tooltips. Hovering over an icon will typically provide you with a detailed description to help you understand it. Let's take a closer look <laughs> at the interface elements on this screen. The labor allocation panel displays an icon for each citizen living at this colony and how they are employed either as farmers, workers, or scientists. You can hover over the food, production, and science icons <laughs> for a detailed breakdown of how your citizens are contributing to their production. You can reassign citizens to new jobs by left-clicking on them and dragging them into their new roles. Food is necessary to feed each of your citizens. Typically, one citizen requires one food per turn. Okay. Production is used to construct new planetary improvements and ships at this colony. Science is used to research new technologies, which unlock new buildings for your planets, modules for your ships, and other improvements. But we'll get to that soon enough. The upper panel displays the vital statistics of this planet. I assume this one. The size and climate of a planet determine its maximum population and how much food can be produced per farmer per turn. The mineral richness of a planet can range from ultra-poor to poor, abundant, rich, and ultra-rich. Richness affects the amount of production per worker that can be created per turn at this planet. The population growth meter shows you how many turns remain until a new citizen is born on this colony. The number to the right of the meter indicates the growth rate. Hover over the growth rate for a detailed breakdown of this colony's reproductive efforts. <laughs> Look, we have Einstein, we have the engineer, I suppose, and we have a Haley Bill, I assume. <laughs> so. The money icon indicates the net profit or loss of this colony as expressed in BC or billions of credits. 
the approval icon indicates your approval rating at this colony. High approval ratings can result in bonuses to the output of this planet, whereas low approval ratings will result in penalties. Mouse over either of them for a detailed breakdown. Okay, we have the monies, science, ships, these are command points. Uh, approval ratings. Uh, oh, I see. It's okay, here it is. Approval ratings, the monies. And of course, that is is corrupt to the core, like we have a wizard art nowadays, and we'll probably keep being. There's not something that's gonna change anytime soon. The ground forces panel shows you which troops you have stationed on this planet. Ground troops can be customized in the troop upgrade panel. If you want to rebase your troops or to use them in a planetary assault, you can launch troops into troop transports using the launch button. To do that. You'll first need to build some freighters to serve as troop transports. So let's now take a look at how to build things. Okay. The area in the upper right of this screen. In this screen, you can manage the production of your colonies. On the left is a list of all of the buildings that you can create at this colony. On the right is a list of the various ships and special units that can be created. Left clicking any of these items will add them to the build queue. Perhaps you could add a few military vessels to your build queue, or a new colony ship. Note that when you do, they appear in the bottom center panel. You can drag items in the build queue to rearrange their build order. When you're done here, click the close button, or simply right click a blank area to return to the colony overview screen. Before we finish with this screen, you may notice a large hex grid occupying most of it. Yeah. This grid displays which planetary improvements have been built here at this colony. You can mouse over any of them for a detailed description of the item, and you can left click the item to scrap it if you so wish, which might be useful if you need to cut down on maintenance costs or raise funds quickly. When you're done here, right click to return to the galaxy map. Before we proceed, Take a moment to familiarize yourself with the view controls. You can change your view using the W, A, S, and D keys, or by mousing to the edge of the screen. What the? Zoom in and out using the mouse scroll wheel. <coughs> Serpentine nebula? Click the next button when you're ready to proceed, and I'll reset the camera to show you a few key concepts oh, regarding no fleets. In our nebula? <laughs> Seriously, I'm impressed. I seen some re reviews of the beta and you know the all these things, but I am truly impressed. I played quite a lot of 4Xs, and trust me, none of them are. Many of them don't even compare. There's no <laughs> comparison possible. Period. And keep in mind, one guy did all this. I heard he had some help with some art access, but the UI, the gameplay, the story per se, the lore, everything, one guy. Which also explains why the heck not of the assets are from the first game. <laughs> not that I complain, I like them in the first game. At this level of zoom, you can clearly see your home system and the edges of your imperial space. You can also see a number of unexplored star systems. Let's get to exploring, shall we? Shall we? Start by selecting your fleet. Just left click. Okay. Here you can see the ships in this fleet, as well as this fleet's various statistics. Take a moment to mouse over the icons in this panel to understand their significance. Not if you'd like to rename a fleet, you can left click its name to do so. You can view a combat ship's details by right clicking its icon. You can rename your ships in the display details panel if you wish to. <laughs> hey, I'm in fleet V1. <laughs> it changes. Damn! 
Fuel is an important strategic consideration. It will be the first game if you're in, if you're wondering. You can see this fleet's current fuel highlighted on screen. Fleets don't require fuel to move while within your territorial borders, but once they leave the shaded area signifying your borders, their fuel supplies will diminish. Fleets that are out of fuel move very slowly and can only chart a course to a nearby colony or refueling station. Let's now try to do a little exploring. Okay. With the fleet selected, right click any area of the map to issue a move order. The final step before you can begin your game is to select your first research topic. The research screen provides you with six different fields of study. You may choose to study a single choice within a single field at a time before leveling up that field of study. Choose carefully as you will lose the ability to research skipped text in the future. Don't worry, you can still get those technologies but you'll have to use diplomacy or espionage to do so. Make a research choice and close the screen to continue. Experimental. Things per quarter, sore armor. Blanket is gonna friend, research. The fizzy knows mine. Rover Bay. Gone, Rover. Damn it! It is over like this. Hmm. Okay, much better. Okay, I'd make rover by rover will work tirelessly day and night to implement your plans. Roof. Okay. Dino's mine. Person per worker. Structure. Well, there is a lot. Okay, so plasma cannon. Plasma cannon is magnetic steel. Drivers, that's a flare. What do you do? My boy, of flares, and you start at the net. I miss all. Plan a few cells, but I'm avoiding the charge. Like so, basically. Because it flares some extra fuel or a plasma cannon. What about you? Turn. On one win. Decisions, decisions. Right now I need a farm above all else. Of course, research lab, Imperial University, but research for science, but research for scientists. Silver armor. Let's see. Ok, 
Okay, got the lot, but it gives me iron bean and solar armor. Interesting. And what about the experimental? What and what? Of? I have no idea what to do. Okay, so what to do? What to do? Well, I'd make Rover Bay. If it's, this is anything like the first game in the in the workings, that stuff is going to be invaluable. Okay. Now that's done. All right. It looks like you are ready to take your first turn. You can click the turn button in the lower right of the screen, but the best way to play Star Drive 2 is to hold down the space bar to progress turns. The whole galaxy will update in real time when you do. There is no turn order in Star Drive 2. Your first order of business should be to find a new world to colonize. You've got a colony ship and you know how to explore, so get to it. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Vessel, gunny ship, a frigate. Interesting. I think I'll do for the, the academy first. Now for shipyards. Oh wait, these are the. Welcome to the shipyard. Okay. This screen allows you to customize the loadout and combat behaviors of your warships. Okay. On the right side of the screen, you can see all of the currently available ship hulls. Left-clicking a hull's icon will select that hull. Try clicking around to see the various sizes and shapes of the hulls available to you. When you're ready to move on, click the next button. Okay, your corvette, your frigate, your cruiser, and I suppose the battleship and the dreadnoughts. And I don't have the technology for it. Frigate and cruiser. Hmm. When you have a hull selected, a list of available loadouts will be displayed in the highlighted area. As you can see, I see. clicking a loadout will load that ship design onto the selected hull. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Hulls have five sections, fore, aft, port, starboard, and center. Ship sections live and die as a unit. That is, if a ship is taking fire from the left, then the port side ship modules installed there will start to take damage, working from the outside in. Okay. If the entire port section is destroyed and your ship continues to take fire from the left, then the damage will pass on to the center section. When all of the modules in a ship's center section are destroyed, then the ship will explode. Interesting. The left side of the screen displays the ship modules available for you to install on your ship. You can see... With the laser cannon's entry selected, you can see that four variants of the laser cannon exist, each with their own statistics, such as production <laughs> cost, power draw, range, damage, and so on. As always, try mousing over each icon for a description of its significance.
You can also see a number of checkboxes in the highlighted area. These checkboxes allow you to further modify the performance of a ship module, typically increasing its performance in some way at the trade-off of increasing the module's production cost or power requirements. To install a ship module, you simply need to select it from the list of available variants on the left side of the screen, and then click an area on the selected hull's module overlay grid. If you want to remove a module from the selected hull's module overlay grid, simply right-click that module. The highlighted area on the right side of the screen displays your ship's overall statistics, as well as a checklist to help you create a valid ship design. One of the most important concepts to keep in mind is that most <laughs> ship modules require power to operate. To create power, your ship must have enough power plants installed. The overall positive or negative power generation is listed in the statistics panel. Another key concept is to ensure that all ships have enough ammunition to fire their weapons. Energy weapons require that you have power capacitors installed. Power capacitors act as batteries that are drained when energy weapons are fired, and they fill back up at the rate of your positive power flow. Kinetic weapons, like missiles, require that you install ordnance lockers. Ordnance lockers are only refilled by visiting a friendly colony, meaning that your heavier weapons might only have enough ammunition for one or two battles in the field before you need to rearm. The Orders buttons allow you to customize the basic combat behavior of this ship. You may specify whether you want this ship to face its target head-on or with its broadsides. You can also specify whether you want this ship to keep moving at all times or to get into position and hold its ground. Okay. As a final piece of advice, you should try to balance the strategic needs of your ship versus the combat needs of your ship. For instance, fuel cells will increase your ship's range on the strategy map, but are useless in combat. Likewise, sensors do not play a role in combat, but can help you see threats on the strategy map. Keep in mind that you don't need to design every ship from scratch. Try loading up an existing loadout and modifying it when you want to upgrade. When you're done with your design, enter a name for it and hit the save button. Okay, so that's how you make a ship. Okay, let's see. Order storage. Confirm. Systems. Cockpit takes four. Still don't get it. Okay, I need a fuel cell. Small one. Now defenses. going to need uh, power and of course engines small engines and nuclear power plant <laughs> as far as weapons go I'm going with missiles for this Corvette okay rockets Mini. Good. Okay, class name is... Well... Missiler. V1. Let's get the heck out. And 
for build. I should have a miss server now. Indeed I do. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I need you guys. Okay, remind me again, research, I'm researching automatic rover bay. Yeah, they should allow me to put this guy. Well then. Guess that's it for the tutorial. Soul 1, Soul 2, aka a Mercury and Venus. <laughs> the original had the soul system, had it is, it is in reality. Well, guess not this one. And look, an anomaly. Anyway, people, 31 minutes for. And right now, 30 seconds. I guess that's enough for today. Well, people, thanks for watching. That was the basic tutorial. So if I sound a little different, again, I have to get rid of uh, two today, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Anyway, till next time, see you around, people, ta-ta, don't forget to check out my other Let's Plays.